to be mindful of the congestions on a highway, to be considerate of other road users, and then to also reduce their speed. In other news, the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, ICU, has asked management of Move and Pick Hotel to address allegations of racial discrimination. The General Secretary of the ICU, Solomon Jackson, a protest by some workers of the hotel who accused management of shielding an expatriate employee over a gold deal. Workers of Mervyn Peak picketed at the premises to demand the immediate dismissal of the expatriates who engaged in the illegal gold business. According to the aggrieved staff, the affected worker was indicted by a disciplinary committee set up to investigate the matter, but the culprit remains at post. The Industrial and Commercial Workers Union insists the expatriate staff must be dismissed. People have been dismissed because of tea bag. People have been dismissed because they took what we will call in our local parlance meat pie, okay? And some were also dismissed because they have looked at a particular expert with a kind of eye. Now, if an expert today has fallen in the web of the code of conduct, why that in this case is going to be treated differently? This is the bottom line of the entire action. And we believe the GM will be advising himself by now. I see, we always say, we don't hire, we don't fire. But we will tell of your conduct. We will tell of your actions and inactions. And if your employer decides to let you go, we don't have a case. The ICU expects the report from the disciplinary committee to be implemented, calling for the labor law to be reviewed to address the abuse of workers' rights. He is of the view the Labor Act should be reviewed to address the abuse of workers' rights. But our laws are such that you have come in, immigration have given you working permits. All conditions of work is the same except your contract of service that was signed to you. And that goes on to show what you earn and what you don't earn. But in terms of regulation and code of conduct to the work, everybody is the same. But those experts, and I'm saying this time around, they are just on the minority. That's a handful. And when we get them, we allow them to deal with them because they are the gun. Away from labor issues, the National Road Safety Commission says the alarming rate of road accidents across the country is unacceptable and can be avoided. More than 700 persons were killed through road accidents between January to March this year. Here's a report by my colleague Frederick Clarence Williams. Shock at the phenomenal surge in the number of deaths in the first quarter of the year, blaming the situation largely on indiscipline and weak enforcement of regulations. She described the motor accident menace as a health issue that threatens the foundation of society and ought to be treated with all the seriousness it deserves. If you look at the motorcycle deaths and the tricycles, it is growing. Growing so much that is alarming. The LI 2180, the road traffic regulation to 2012 is being reviewed. And one of the critical issues that have come up several over the years is about this motorcycle. For us, we are not saying that we should legalize it, no. But we want to hear the views of all Ghanaians so that when we review this law, whether it's for or against, we will be well informed. Presenting road safety reflectors to the commission, the operation director of Street Centre organization, Yaudo Tamaklo, called for urgent and pragmatic strategies to curb road accidents. The spate of accidents has become unbearable. We cannot accept it. Over 700 deaths within this short period, I think, uh, we must uh, show concern. Now, six police officers are to undergo training in South Africa to enable them to fly and maintain police operation helicopters. The Interior Minister, Ambrose Derry, announced this when he broke the ground for the construction of a helicopter hangar and helipad at the formed police unit headquarters here in Accra. A report by Peter Kwao Adato. 
President Sekufuado on March 25 announced the procurement of three helicopters to enhance police operations. The deal was repeated by the Chief of Staff at the Presidency, Akosia Fremont Pare, on Friday, April 13, during the 2019 Police West African Security Services Association end of year get together. What many did not know is that government was responding to appeals made by the police administration. The government consider equipping the police service with at least a helicopter to facilitate deployment and reduce response time to public disorder related incidents. The service remains amazed with the news from His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Akufuado of the procurement of not one but three helicopters. This will definitely revolutionize police operations. Men and women of the service are in ecstatic mood as we wait the arrival of the new helicopters. The Inspector General of Police, David Asentia Pietu, led the Interior Minister Ambrose Derry to break ground for the construction of a hangar and helipad at the formed police unit headquarters. We are making sure that we provide the infrastructure that keep the helicopters when they arrive and therefore the construction of the helipad and hangar. Let me emphasize that we are not pursuing any aspect or facet of the empowerment and retooling to the detriment of the areas. The sector minister announced the training of personnel to fly and manage the helicopters. We are sending six of our own Ghanaian police officers to South Africa for next month to train as pilots. And we are also going to train people who take care of the engineering. And they would come back and man the air wing where they also continue to train others. The two-phase project is to be completed within three months. The construction work is being undertaken by Paramount Groups with consultancy from Rizzle Consult, a local firm. You're still watching Media Live here on TV3. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments, and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. Visit any of our social media pages. That's TV3 Ghana on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, the quality bus system, QBS, popularly known as Ayalolo, has resumed operations almost seven months after being grounded because of financial difficulties. Now, operations of the bus service was halted in October 2018 as a result of what officials described described as technical hitches. The company's to-do terminal was functional on Thursday with bus carrying passengers on the Kaswa route. Now at least four buses were in a queue loading passengers at its to-do terminal near the Cocoa Board office around 5 p.m. on Thursday. All right, so let's stay a while longer on the subject. Fred Chidi is the manager in charge of communications at the company and joins us live on the phone lines. Uh, Mr. Chidi, thank you very much for your time. It's been uh, six long months out of service. What accounted for this and how come you are back to service? Hello. Hello, Fred, if you can hear me. I was asking uh, how come you're back to service? What has changed? How come you're back in service? I, I didn't quite catch the question. I'm sorry. Yes, Fred, if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Probably. Yes, it's been six long months uh, since you've been out of service. Uh, first of all, what accounted for this and what has changed? Well, I just had six months. Well, it is true. Uh, we suspended service in November last year. It's not challenges that we were having in terms of... Uh, the fleet of the buses and then how we run them and the revenue that is uh, accruing as a result of the service. And so uh, after this six long months, we've decided not to continue to wait until uh, proper intervention by government. So what we decided to do uh, just two weeks ago was to deploy six, just six of the buses on the Kasua CBD route, that is the Kaswa Accra Central Business District route, uh, during the peak period, that is the morning peak and then the evening peak. 
uh, that has become necessary because we realize that a huge number or there's a huge demand for public transport around those times, early morning from 5.30 to about 8 to 9, and then also in the evening from about 4 to about 8. And so management decided that we deploy just six of the buses. Uh, and then significantly, um, at this moment, not to use the bus cards. You know, the Ayalola system um, revolves around using a card system, not paying cash on board the bus. So we decided to suspend the card system, adopt a cash and carry sort of system where when you get on board the bus, we will take, there's a conductor on board which will, who will issue a ticket and then you are given a seat very comfortably. So that's what we started doing. And if it is kind of possible, uh, we may want to replicate on the other corridors. But Generally, we're waiting for government intervention in the Ayalolo bus system because it's supposed to be a bus rapid transit, which then means that you need dedicated infrastructure uh, to have the buses move from one location to the other quickly, moving a large number of people. That has been one of the challenges that we had since the BRT started in Ghana, where there is very limited infra dedicated infrastructure. So what you see now on the Kaswa corridor is just on pilot basis in the mornings and in the evening using just six buses. All right, Fred, uh, thank you very much for your time and for that clarification. Fred Chidi works with the um, Ayaloba service. Now, away from that, the chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Government Assurances, Collins Ousu Amankwa, wants uh, civil society organizations and the citizenry to hold government in check to promote accountable governance. The move, he said, is the only way to effectively track government assurances and ensure rapid development. A report by Frederick Clarence Williams. The Committee on Government Assurances of Parliament was established in 1998 to pursue all government assurances, promises and undertakings given by cabinet ministers and report to the House on the extent to which such assurances have been carried out. At a workshop in Accra, the chairman of the committee, Colin Sousa Mankwa, said it is important for citizens to build consensus and form strategic alliances. Our power is not limited on the floor of Parliament. So that notion must be despaired. We have powers to track all promises, both inside and outside parliament. I would employ all of you, especially the, the civil society organization, the media, to rally behind uh, this committee uh, so that together we achieve greatness. We need to track all promises. Noted a concerted and inclusive approach to scrutinize government assurances and promises would achieve a greater impact. What we want to do at Pen Plus Bytes is ensure that every citizen has their voice recognized and their the public op public's opinion is actually represented on the floor of parliament. What we've done is we've chosen to work with the um, Committee on Governance Assurances because obviously that's what um, that committee is the one that has oversight of the projects that happen in our communities. The workshop was on the theme, civil society engagement with parliament in holding governments to account. All right, so today on our MTN Video Report, our citizen journalist, Kinsley Boache, reports on the poor state of a bridge at Ifidriasi Banco in the Ashanti region. Uh, he's appealed to the authorities to come to their aid. This is a bridge that connects a town called Banco and we also on Efijase Mampon Highway in Ashanti region. This bridge has been in such a deplorable state for six years without any fence, very narrow, which poses a threat to the citizens here. We are appealing to the government to come to our aid. Reporting from TV3, Kinsley Boache.
Boy, just like Kingsley Boy, you can also send your video report via WhatsApp on 055-1433044. That's 055-1433044. You're still watching Media Live here on TV3. Remember to keep your views and suggestions coming in on our social media pages on Facebook and on Twitter. It's TV3. You're welcome back to Media Life here on TV3. Now, let's do business no news now. And some oil marketing companies have increased prices of petroleum products at the pumps by about 2%. Now, some fuel stations monitored by TV3 this morning revealed that a gallon of petrol is selling at 5 cities 89 pesos, up from 5 cities 70 pesos. Energy think tank. The Institute for Energy Security earlier noted that while some oil marketing companies could keep prices unchanged in order to maintain uh, market share as part of the deregulation policy, most OMCs are likely to take advantage of the window to make up for previous depressed margins. Now, on the local fuel market, performance within the first pricing window in April, uh, IES I I said, uh, some OMCs review their prices downwards to maintain market shares, while largely prices stayed unchanged. Right, I've just been joined with the studio by, uh, you know, Executive Director of the Institute for Energy Security, Megdad Mohammed. Megdad, good to see you. Uh, happy holidays to you. You want me to lose my job. Uh, okay. Pak Wissan Namwasati is Executive Director. And, and you are? Uh, a research analyst. Research analyst, mm -hmm. good. Thanks for the clarification there. Uh, happy holidays to you. Yeah, so, you. what are we seeing at the POMS? What's accounting for uh, those changing and those decide to maintain their prices? Uh, largely for this particular pricing window, which is the April 2nd uh, pricing window, what we are seeing largely is uh, influenced by the international markets. Mm. You know, over the past couple of weeks, there have been a lot of drama on the international market, not only about Trump's tweets, mm. but also mm. about uh, some crisis in Libya. And uh, it's taking food for countries are not willing to now be buyers of Iranian oil. Venezuela has had a couple of outages which has affected its production by about 289,000. and all that. Exactly, $1,000 per, per, per barrel. Mm -hmm. And Saudi Arabia for the past two weeks also cut down production by about 390,000 barrels per was day. Was that a decision by OPEC? Uh, OPEC had a quota. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, dramatically, uh, Saudi Arabia decided to cut down some uh, some 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 section of its expectations russia has continued to pump but that has not been enough to keep the market stable and also the news of the very positive strides the u.s china trade talks are making out has also uh, touched the market in some way mm -hmm. so for the first time since november 8th uh, 2018 oil peaked at 72 dollars per barrel since november 8th we've not had that high figure for for brent crude and that largely is what pushed the price of finished products to see a gasoline increment, which is petrol increment on the international market, rising to about uh, almost 13 percent, about exactly 12.98 percent, which is just about 13, 13 percent exactly. Mm -hmm. And then gas oil having just a marginal increment of about 1.42. So when we looked at, yes, uh, previously the discussion on fuel price increment has been contingent on the, the wobbly uh, relationship between the city and the dollar. Uh, in uh, August 2018, September, October, November, when we had those increments, they were largely because of the forex relationship. The city has been weak against the dollar. Mm. But uh, consumers will be wondering how come we are going to pay more for fuel when the city has made a very good showing against the dollar for the past couple of weeks. Well, it is not only the forex that determines the movement of fuel prices. Mm. The reason why, largely, at a, as an institute, we always uh, focus the discussion on forex is because it is one factor of price a movement that we can mm. we have a control over mm. for example when uh, uh, there's a general in libya who is launching an attack on tripoli mm. the government of ghana cannot do anything about that those are external factors, those are external factors. Mm. but when it comes to how we can strengthen our currency and make it strong mm. so that traders oil traders can have a, a good bargain and when they bring in the products uh, consumers can get good prices mm. then we can talk about that but for this window uh, uh, fortunately the city has been very good it has uh, it has appreciated about 2.5 percent for the first price window that we reviewed mm. but that's in the face of a 13 percent increment for gasoline on the international markets market, right. will not be enough to make prices stay the same mm. it's what has occasioned the 2.1 percent increment at the pump and then again Per the IES release you 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 made reference to, mm. uh, for most of the oil marketing companies, and this is a matter of fact. I mean, it's one of the things that I would want to employ you to uh, consider. Mm. Some of them are struggling to to keep afloat. 
if you look at the the number of OMTs in the market, they have mm. reduced drastically. There have been acquisitions and measures within the industry because the small players are struggling. It is only the large players who are able to say, okay, for this window, we will not change prices. We will mm. keep it the same, and they will still make some uh, pesos because of the the large volumes they import. But for the small players, they can't afford to do that kind of deregulation competition. Mm. Mm. They end up competing on their margins. Mm. And when you compete on your margins, it means that you are eating away your profit in the name of and keeping the margins are, are the market small. share. They are pretty, the marketers' margin are, are mm. pretty quite small. Mm. So that is what uh, made us certain that for this window, consumers should brace themselves up for more. And there's been this discussion about the projections we make. The imperative for the, for, for the projection is that, you know, previously, prices go up on the quiets mm. because of the deregulation policy by weekly changes of mm. prices. Mm. Consumers or motorists go to the filling station and they are, they are hit by an increment which happened overnight without anyone knowing, wow. occasioning a fracas at uh, four filling stations, wow. which are national security uh, uh, facilities. Mm. So with our projections, we, we, we put consumers in preparation, in preparedness for what is to come. And the second factor too is that we give the MPA the opportunity to know that we are not only leaving them with the sole responsibility of being the movers and shakers of petroleum pricing and the industry mm. perspective downstream. Mm. There is a, a policeman of a sort or mm. a third eye of a sort who are willing to cross the T's and dot the I's and ensure that the right things are done. For example, in December 2017, uh, one of the instrumental factors that made the then Energy Minister prompt the MPA to introduce the element of the price stabilization and recovery levy to cushion consumers for the utilities at the time was because IES projection had pointed out to the people that, look, you are going into Christmas, and then there is an increment coming, which is going to be quite substantial. So the public outcry was what prompted the, the then government, headed by Boache Jaco at the Energy Ministry section, mm. to order the MPA boss to kick in the price stabilization and recovery levy, mm. which, to some extent, give consumers some reprieve. Right. So largely, our projection uh, when we, we, we stand vindicated, it's sometimes bad, unfortunate for us, mm -hmm. because our vindication must not mean that consumers are going to pay more, because we are, as I sit here, driving here, I bought fuel mm -hmm. at that uh, five cities, 25 pesos, 2.1 percent increment mm -hmm. at the pump. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much, uh, McDart, for your time. Uh, McDart works with the Institute of Energy Security. Uh, meanwhile, power distribution services PDS has blamed this morning's, um, you know, power outage experience in some parts of the country on challenges at the Ghana Grid Company. Now, in a statement, PDS said its operational areas in the southern zone of the country were affected by the outage due to unstable power supply from Gridco. Residents in some parts of Accra, Kumasi and Ho complained about unannounced power outages. The power distribution company has assured customers supply will be restored uh, to affected areas if Gridco rectify the situation. Gridco is yet to respond to the matter. The new company has encountered a series of challenges which have resulted in several cuts in several parts across the country. Well, that's all for the very latest in business. You're welcome back to Media Life here on TV3. Now, Senior Minister Yao Safumafu says jailing Chinese illegal miner uh, N1, aka Aisha, for engaging in illegal mining was not important as it was uh, not going to solve Ghana's economic, uh, as it was not going to solve Ghana's economic problems. Mr. Osafumafu made the comment in a video gone viral when he addressed a recent town hall meeting organized by Governor Broad. <laughs> the the main company that is helping develop the infrastructure system in Ghana is Sano Ivory. It's a Chinese company. It's the one that's going to help process our website and provide about two billion dollars to us. I wonder these kind of arrangements. There are other things behind the scenes. Putting that lady in jail in Ghana is not going to solve your economic problem. It's not going to make you happy or me happy. That's important. The most important thing that has been deported out of Ghana. So we must also is not wrong. There are many other things beyond what you see in this matter. And everybody is wide away. The most important thing is that we have found this established location and we are protecting our family. And we have a far more important than one Chinese woman.
Aisha Huang was arraigned on May 9, 2017 for engaging in illegal small-scale mining at Paper Tinting in the Amansia Central District of the Ashanti region. She and four other Chinese nationals who were arrested for their involvement in legal mining were deported after the state filed a nolly prosecutor to discontinue the trial. She was charged with three counts of undertaking small-scale mining operations contrary to sections 99 clause 1 of the Minerals and Mining Act 2006 Act 703 providing mining support services without valid registration with the Minerals Commission contrary to the Minerals and Mining Act 2006 Act 703 and illegal employment of foreign nationals contrary to the Immigration Act 2000 Act 573. The other four accused persons were charged with disobedience of directives given by or under the Immigration Act 2000 Act 573. To the prosecution, the visas issued to all the five Chinese by the Ghana Embassy in Beijing, China, did not allow them to work in Ghana. Right, and with the onset of the rains, residents living at Nungwa uh, Sangona are calling on government to help dredge their drain. The choke drain, which is a source of worry to them, overflows into the homes whenever it rains heavily. Residents of Nungwa Sangona always live in fear anytime the cloud gathers. The area floods anytime it rains, as drains in the area are choked. As the rains set in this year, Sangona will again experience flooding. Residents are appealing to government to help dredge the Sangona drain to prevent further damage to property and loss of lives. Assemblyman for the area, Robert Oko, indicated some dredging was done in the past but not in recent times. At first, when Amate is an MC, every year they normally dredge it for us. But now we are facing problems. If they can even do it a concrete, we know as uh, Alajo is, at first Alajo you can't even go there, but they normally do it concrete, now they can even, they are in, even enjoying there. According to the area secretary, Manuel Ame, letters have been sent to the Crowa Municipal Assembly, but no avail. We send a series of letters to the assembly, and normally there were occasions that they would come and dredge, they do window, they do the roadside where everybody will see that uh, dredging has been done. He added residents contributed to dredge the drains some time back, but they still need help. We were able to at least go and then the rain stop for uh, uh, some time. But water, you cannot force water. So water, uh, the water managed to break the boundary under the bridge. So now we've covered the other area. So when it rains, the, when the water overflows, it bounces back to the area. So that is the challenge that we, we, we are facing now. All right, thank you very much, Yafu Sulabi, for the very latest in sports news. In entertainment news this afternoon, we are celebrating a high-life legend, Dr. Pa Bobo. The prolific composer excited many through his witty lyrics and thought-provoking songs. The late Dr. Pa Bobo is remembered for classics like Wenyame Nsumponi, Comfort, and Asobotre. Dr. Pabubu, real name Kwekwe Japon, stands as one of Ghana's top ranking highlifers. Starting as a bandsman in 1968, he played and learned the rudiments of playing guitar under the firm tutelage of Ghana's ace guitarist, Smart in Cancer. As he rose through the ranks, the iconic composer sojourned in Nigeria, where he later formed his band. The late Dr. Pabubu, is loved and celebrated for his originality and thought-provoking lyrics.
me 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 say me wan wan e to the bia e say sometimes e su o top am ti bi ti e ti say you be too be ti e ti ya na me 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 fan say ya de enya me de ma ya me su his name is etched on the minds of high life lovers thanks to hits like comfort yesumpo and ifyenipa which till date remains the favorite of many this one might ring a bell His other works, including in Semkeka, Unyami Sumpo condemned hypocrisy and served as a tool for social change. The High Life Superstar has about 40 albums to his credit. <laughs> Dr. Pabobo worked with some of music great names and bands like the Okukuseku International Band, All Brothers Band, and the Kusum Agroma. The High Life Great died on December 28, 2013, after battling ill health. And of course, these songs come with a lot of nostalgic feelings. It's been 50 years of acclaimed Ghanaian band Osibisa uh, since uh, the acclaimed Ghanaian band Osibisa was formed. Now founded in London in the late 60s, Osibisa was one of the first African heritage bands to become popular, touring and headlining major shows across the globe. Now the group comprised talents including founder and master saxophonist uh, Teddy Osei, trumpeter Mark Tonto, drummer, uh, Soul and Mafio, now Musicians Union of Ghana and Scratch Studios have rolled out a series of activities to celebrate Osibisa's 50th anniversary. Well, the activities include a major launch of the Osibisa Foundation as well as a lecture and workshop on July 2. That will be followed by the Osibisa at 50 concert at Plus 233 Jazz Bar Grill on August 3. The Osibisa at 50 celebration also comes off at the National Theatre on November 23. That's all for entertainment. We'll bring you the very latest in international news. Now, at least 13 people have died and many were injured when a wall collapsed in South Africa at the start of an Easter service at a Pentecostal church. Now, emergency services said that 29 people were rushed to hospital after the collapse in the coastal province of KwaZulu-Natal. Now, a local police spokesperson linked the tragedy to heavy rainfall in the area around Mpangjeni on Thursday night. Local reports said some people had been sleeping when the brick wall fell. The wall at the front of the Pentecostal Holiness Church collapsed at the start of what had been planned as a weekend-long service of uh, to commemorate the Christian festival of Easter. On Friday, a special prayer service was held in a large tent in front of the church, reports the ENCA television station. All right, that's all for the very latest on Midday Life here on TV3. Thanks very much for watching and enjoy your Easter celebrations. Uh, for the very latest in news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com.